What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Nick 4K video. Today we're checking out a video from uh Grim Panchi Gaming. Sorry, I don't I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm I'm probably right, something along those lines. And I got sent this video from one of my buddies who loves uh Dragon Ball Z. And for those of you who may not know, I'm actually a massive fan of Dragon Ball Z as well. I was a massive fan as a kid, kind of went away from it for a while, and then uh the new Sparking Zero game came out. I bought it, I went full in. In fact, I played it so hard. Um, I pretty much almost 100% in the entire game so far and has kept me from making videos last week So if you want anyone to blame for why my videos have been a little more scarce blame blame Dragon Ball Z because it's not my fault It's theirs. So this video was sent to me to kind of give my perspective on a certain part of the video um, In this video he kind of is critiquing different things about the game He still loves the game, but he's critiquing it here and there which is fair I think everyone should be able to do that when it comes to the things they like so in this video, Grimm's kind of breaking down the different criticisms he has and he's explaining stuff. And there's one in particular where he talks about the story mode. And while I have a couple different complaints about this game, like I said, I almost 100 percented it. I have 30 hours plus in it already. My biggest personal complaint was the story mode. And I'll go a little deeper into that as, as he does his video. We'll, we'll go over that. So you want to check out this video, guys. I'll leave a link to it in the uh, description below. You want to see more like this, make sure to like, subscribe, turn notifications for more. And of course, let's begin. Let me give you guys a break real quick, because I know you're probably saying, good Lord, you're just complaining. Guys, let me remind you, I love the game. This game has a lot going for it. I love the combat system. It's high speed. It's fast paced. I love the crunchiness of it. I love dashing after my enemy, smacking them all around, fully charging up, hitting them with a full blast Kamehameha. All that stuff is great. The animations are great. The combat is great. I just want to say this, um, for those of you who may not know, this new Sparking Zero game is effectively Budokai Tenkaichi 4 from way back in the day. So those were on the PlayStation 2 games, and those were considered, especially like by me, but by a lot of people who are kind of like me, who are big Dragon Ball Z fans, but also not like the biggest fan of every Dragon Ball Z game. The Budokai Tenkaichi games are still considered peak when it comes to these games. So Sparking Zero is a big deal because it's actually a really good Dragon Ball Z game. And for a long time, at least in my opinion, I think we've had some pretty rough ones. So um, it's good to see a return to form. Story mode. Now, let me give the devs some grace. I believe what they were trying to go for this time around was similar to the past Dragon Ball games, where the assumption is most people know the Dragon Ball storyline, so let's give a summary of everything instead of giving full detail. Now, I'm not asking for full detail, but I personally believe the way they decided to summarize this story is just not appealing to not only me as a longtime Dragon Ball fan, but I don't believe it's appealing to newcomers either. An example would be, in a lot of the Naruto games, I'm not big into Naruto as a series, but I can say most of them, I can play them and actually learn a lot about the story that's going on in this particular game and it reflects the manga or the anime pretty well. Here, it's such a jump cut in between different things and it's such a summary that if you're not familiar, you're gonna be missing different aspects of the story and not really fully knowing what's going on. Plus, some cutscenes are delivered with voice acting and high quality animations and others are just still frames. This jump in quality is not pleasing to the viewer and it's not pleasing to me as a long time Dragon Ball fan. So as a story mode goes, at least the way they deliver the story, it's not the best. Now, a good thing about the story mode is, okay, before he continues, I'm gonna add to this. Um, for me, I don't really mind the whole um, change of cutscenes. Like sometimes they'll have like a slideshow cutscene and I'll cut into like an actual like, these are just animated. These are like motion captured. If you look at some of the body movements, they're very natural. So it's weird to see Dragon Ball Z in that perspective, like have like uh, motion capture compared to being more like traditionally animated. It's interesting to see. It takes a little bit for your eyes. And there are some shots where I'm like, that looks really weird, but I guess like it works. It's just, it's just my brain just not seeing these characters ever move like real people. But the change in cutscenes and uh, some are voice acted, some aren't, that doesn't really bother me as much. The problem with the campaign for me is that um, the way that the, the campaign is cut up is like, there are eight different characters you can pick from. And of course, Goku, he has the most. You pretty much play through Goku's storyline first, and then you're supposed to go back, and then you play through the next person, you play through the next person. The issue is that 
the story is jumping around the whole time. So effectively, if I want to play in chronological order from beginning to end, I have to play like three missions of Goku. Then I go and I play one mission of Piccolo. Then I got to go play one mission of Vegeta. Then I got to go play two more missions of Goku. Then I got to go play one of Gohan. And then I got to play one of Freeze at some point. It's just very like strange how they decided to go about that. I mean, I definitely respect the idea of being like, hey, you, here's your character and you can follow them through the entire story and then that's that. And it gives you kind of like an abridged version of um, Dragon Ball Z. Speaking of which, uh, Dragon Ball Z abridged. Mm, amazing. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. So the main story will skip over certain perspectives. Overall, you're hitting the main beats, which is fine. There was one tournament arc that they cut out of the super um, part. I was surprised they did that. It was the one where like um, Universe 6 versus Universe 7. Kind of strange that they did that, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. Now, like I said, I am a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. I know all this story, especially Dragon Ball Z. Not super clear on Dragon Ball Super. I don't, I didn't watch all those. But when it comes to Dragon Ball Z, I've watched the entire series. I played almost every single one of the older Dragon Ball Z games. I know all that, but I want to experience it the best that it can. And it definitely feels like they did cut corners here and there unfortunately and they didn't have to do that knowing that this game was going to be massive it was the return to form like i said it is budokai tenkaichi 4 this was the return of the good dragon ball z games you know and fortunately in this aspect they did kind of drop the ball now the campaign is still fun and like i said if you do what i said and you go um you know two missions of goku then you do one mission of piccolo one mission of gohan you can play in chronological order if you want to but with that said it's inconvenient to do that and it makes more sense just to play one character out to finish their story than next character out to finish their story so what i would recommend and i think the developers can still add this in and this is what i would say so what i would recommend if i could ask the developers to do anything i would ask them to do like a um complete timeline version so instead of just having like picking between eight different characters before you can pick like goku he sees the first one on the list put one right above that that's just called story mode and then that can just, you hit story mode and that'll just take you down to chronological order so you can just play every single fight and just get the full experience of, of what the game has to offer. Not a big deal for me, like I said, but if I was, let's say, a new Dragon Ball Z fan, like this was my first game, I wouldn't be super impressed by the campaign. And for me, I know people like to do online fighting and stuff like that, that's great, like the versus mode. For me, the big seller of Dragon Ball Z games is the campaign mode. That's what I recommend if, if you're a developer of this game, Feel free to use my uh, recommendation. Um, you don't have to even send me a check. Just use it, put it in the game, because that's that's a big aspect that I think is turning off newer fans from the game. But overall, it is a fun campaign, just some shortcomings here and there. There's a ton of content. I feel some of the content is a little bit oddly done, but I'm not gonna focus on that right now. I'm just gonna tell you there's a lot to do, a lot of fights, there are what if fights. Now, this is the best part of story mode. They tried to oversell the what if fights a little bit, there's not as many as you would think, but the ones that are here, the what if scenarios, the fan fiction that these writers created, these people must be Dragon Ball fans too, because some of these I experienced were so good. Even some of them that didn't even seem all that interesting, just the dialogue they had going back and forth was cool. I think that this should have been the highlight of story mode. And if anything, I would have preferred if they just made a whole entire what if story, because this part was great. Now, going back to some okay so i did want to talk about the what ifs um i think the what ifs are really cool i just wish that they were more um like i could play the canon version first and then i could do a what if because i had a couple times in this campaign where i beat a guy too fast like i was just playing the game i got pretty good at, at beating guys up and i beat the enemy too fast and then i unlocked a what if and then it's an example of like what if goku killed Frieza with the spirit bomb type of thing. And if you if you just kill Frieza normally without hitting him with the spirit bomb, then the game ends with him like, ha, oh, I beat him up, let's go guys, ha ha, and they all walk off in the sunset. It's just one of those things where it catches you off guard and it happens more than once. So in, in a certain way, if you're really good at this game, you kind of have to turn down your goodness to, to unlock some of the what ifs or to even unlock the main story. So it's just kind of weird how they did that. I kind of wish there was a way that I could just turn off the, the what ifs and then go back and do each of them separately. But with that said, I might just be too much of a pro gamer. So maybe that's just my problem. <laughs> oddities, not necessarily negatives, just some oddities about the story mode that I didn't understand is some characters, like for example, Goku, he starts off his story 
in the beginning of the Saiyan saga and they speed him all the way up. Only his battles that he participated in do you get to experience. And most of them are there. Cool. That's fine. But then I played as Vegeta. Vegeta's story starts off in the Frieza saga and not the Saiyan saga. I don't know why they did that. You select adult Gohan as a character. But when you select him, you actually start off as teen Gohan, even though you selected adult Gohan. And you don't get to play as Kid Gohan, even though Kid Gohan had fights. He had a lot of fights. He was in yeah. the Saiyan Saga and in the Frieza Saga. Yeah, I thought that was weird. I thought that was weird for sure. I don't know why they started you off as Teen Gohan in the Cell Saga, but again, I don't comprehend why you are removing content or not delivering content and you're starting me off in weird places. Again, this stuff is just weird and odd. And again, if you're not familiar with the series, this story mode is disjointed. The other major game mode here is custom battle. Now this mode, listen, let me tell you something. This is the, this is like the hidden gem of this game. This is the sleeper hit of this game. Now this mode does explain why the story mode kind of sucks, but I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. Okay, yeah, before he gets into this, I actually think custom battle was kind of the developer's way of cutting corners and he'll explain what it is in this video but pretty much what the aspect of it is is people can make their own stories right and so if you have people making their own fights effectively making their own campaign what ifs then you don't have to do as much work it's the same thing with minecraft it's why minecraft is the same thing <laughs> since this since it started you know, it's, it's the modding community that keeps Minecraft going till this day. Why would they make a Minecraft 2 when Minecraft 1 makes so much money because people are making mods for that game? doesn't make sense. So I think that's what they did with this. I do like this. I think this is cool. I think they should expand upon this in a sequel, but I definitely still want a full-fledged, uh, much more deeper campaign like he mentioned. First of all, if you're not creative, the developers made a few levels or a few stages in which they make custom stories with fan fiction that you get to experience. And this stuff is pretty well done. It's pretty well made. Some of the dialogue is a little off, but overall, I think this concept is cool. But for anyone that feels creative, you also can make your own scenarios and these can be very deep. You can make them as intricate as you want. We're talking about something as crazy as if you want it to be these particular fighters fighting on this particular stage and the only way you can win is by ring out or the only way you can win is by doing an ultimate attack or you have to beat them in a certain time limit or your character can't fly but the other character can the other character is souped up with the maxed out ai difficulty and you're playing as this weak character you can set it up however you want you can make cutscenes for it you can add dialogue to it it's so cool and it sounds complicated because it kind of is but it's not that complicated. I have to give the developers a lot of credit. A lot of these game modes in certain games with customization can be so deep that it can be too complex for the average person. I would say that with a little bit of, you know, practice, and I don't mean even much, most people could probably get a hang of how this mode works. So I have to give them so much credit for how they delivered this mode and made it simple for the average person to use. But again, like I said, when it comes to fan fiction, let me tell you, I gotta, I gotta really, this is one of the biggest praises for this game. Because I remember as a kid, I used to play Dragon Ball games, pick my favorite characters, and in my head create scenarios of why they're fighting. And they made a mold around it. It was almost like someone I did the who same. made this game or worked on this game knew this is something that we did when we played this game. It's probably something that they did when they played the games. And I just thought that this was so cool. All our fan fiction, for the most part, is so much options available to you that you can basically make any scenario scenario you want. And I think that this was a brilliant mode. Now I mentioned something. I said this mode kind of explains why the story mode's delivery kind of sucks. Let me tell you why. In the story mode, one of the main things you can unlock are panels that you can use in this mode. And scenes that you unlock in that mode, you can use in the custom, the custom battle mode. That's cool, but then it makes you wonder, well, wait a minute. Most of the cutscenes in story mode are just this custom battles mode cutscenes, which explains why there's a big gap in quality between the cutscenes that they clearly made 
to show off the story with great voice acting and animation versus these steel cuts and steel shots of very basic animations. And again, these basic animations are sometimes useful. They're, everything doesn't need to be high quality. But once you start realizing like, oh, most of story mode is just custom battle mode, it kind of, you know, yeah, eh, I saw it kind of dampers the whole thing. And yep. the thing that makes it even more crazy, remember I said how this game has missing fights in story mode? Well, why would you? It's almost like, okay, the fights that are missing, you can literally recreate in custom battle mode. So why didn't you just give them to me in story mode? Exactly. Whatever. Maybe it's a nitpick to you, but to me, I just thought it was kind of weird and didn't make much sense. Okay, so that's the whole campaign aspect of this video. Um, yeah, I can't agree with him more. I That's a problem. I really hope that the next one doesn't have that issue. And now that we live in more of a digital world where we can have more DLCs, and I think there's like a ton of DLCs planned for the future of this. I hope that they also add on to the campaign. I don't just want like 20 more characters each DLC. You know, I want like an actual story aspects thrown in there. Even if you do like, like, like I said, like past trunk story, do like the Bardock story, something along those lines. Just do something, give us some more campaign to play because that's how I like my Dragon Ball Z games. Um, like I said, I don't really do the versus and online stuff unless there's an achievement involved, in which case then I'll go for it. But overall, um, yeah, it's, it's a fun game. I'm having a great time. I spent so much time in it. <laughs> I lost a lot of productivity because of it. But overall, campaign is lacking and uh, I think they need to do a little better. But that's just my personal opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Are you a massive Dragon Ball Z fan? Are you just kind of new? How do you feel about this game? And even better, if you are a new player who've, who's never really played Dragon Ball Z in the past and this is your first game, what's your personal opinion on this campaign? Did you think it was fine? Or did you feel like it was a little rough and it could have been better? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn notifications for more. If you want to check out any more of my videos, I have them here linked on the screen. So thanks again for watching. Catch you later. Peace.